the main central view here I've got is, is anaglyph, and it's not because I'm a great fan of anaglyph, but it's often quite a handy way just to visualize what's going on without needing any fancy hardware. Um, and uh, the two views I have on the right, the top view is the left view, and the bottom view is the right view. These are taken from a, um, a shoot that someone did for us in Mexico. This is a pair of red cameras, uh, so they're shot parallel, not converging. And in the whole setup, there's some defects. And what we're trying to do here is show how we can use ocular to start to deal with some of the defects. One of the things we're working on here is the, uh, the idea of the color correction. So it's a color correction between the left and the right views. And if I flip between them, you can see on the, the right view, which is the, um, the bottom one on the right pair, uh, we're doing a, um, uh, an automated color correct, which tries to match the density of the left and the right eyes. And you can see it also, um, um, it changes, you can see the brightness change on the, um, on the anaglyph as well. So color correction, that means basically we take the stream we've got, we insert some uh, nodes in it to do the color correction. And then we then move on to the slightly more uh, complicated part. This is a vertical alignment uh, tool. So if I flip back, if I can work out which way is back, that's back. Um, if I toggle between these, we'll see the original view has a vertical disparity. It's most obvious in the anaglyph view. And after applying this plugin, we've evened out the vertical disparities. And the way we do this is by identifying features that are in the left image and the right image and trying to work out an image transform that will minimize the vertical shift between the stereo pairs. But much more sophisticated than just a XY offset. Yeah. Um, we're finding that lots of people have slightly different things they want to correct. So we're introducing, um, as we're ending up towards the um, product release, introducing more and more possible transforms in there as we go. Um, the things that, a lot of things trouble different people differently, which is why we have to kind of be fairly broad in this. Um, uh, an obvious early, early thing people came up with was um, if you're shooting with converging cameras and you have um, some keystoning effects as a result of the convergence that you wish to adjust for, um, then you want a transform that can automatically calculate an unkeystoning effect on the majority of the shot in order to minimize the vertical disparities. Um, other common ones are simply camera misalignment. So your cameras are vertically misaligned, or there's some shake between the cameras, or there may be a rotation of one eye with respect to the other. So all of these things are possibilities. The next node down in the tree, the thing I've got highlighted on the view here is this disparity generator. And um, as we've already said, the stream currently contains a left view and a right view. And what the disparity generator injects into the um, stream is a very dense mapping of um, a per pixel mapping from the left eye to the right eye and from the right eye to the left eye. And if we have such a per pixel mapping, then we can start to play new tricks. Um, this is roughly if you try to take a luminance value of what the left to right eye mapping looks like. It looks vaguely like one of these. It's a bit like a depth map, but not quite. Um, so one of the first tricks we can play is um, if we go back to one of the standard things that we might want to do with a stereo pair is to alter the convergence point. And this is simply a matter of where we want to slide the images left and right a bit. But because we have this dense pixel mapping, it means we can just, uh, using the GUI, we can select a point on the screen, and the whole thing will automatically reconverge onto that point. So it's, again, more obvious from the anaglyph how the reconvergence is working. But all it's doing is it's using this dense disparity map to calculate how to reconverge the images without us having to manually set up um, a reconvergence. So that's one of the most like, trivial uses of it. Um, this is a slightly more sophisticated one. Um, and what we're doing here is we are varying uh, the, interaxial se the effective interaxial separation of the cameras. So um, these are two red cameras. Uh, they don't fit terribly tightly together um, when squeezed hard. And so what we've done here is, from the original view, we've squashed it down so we've generated a new view um, where we basically have two virtual cameras which lie somewhere between the two original ones. Um, and this is just a simple diagram explaining how that setup is. So the blue cameras are originals, the two virtual ones are the ones in between. Um, and uh, this is a, um, this is a very neat thing to be able to do. Um, if I just toggle through a few frames, as you can see how it holds up. So this is the reconverged shot from those two red cameras. Um, your mileage varies depending on exactly what's in the shot. So this is actually quite a tricky shot. The hardest part and the bit in this one that doesn't hold up well is the um, smoke in exactly the center of the image. So the smoke being transparent and moving, it represents, there's basically there's two depths at that point in the image. There's the steps of the smoke, and there's also the depths of the stuff behind the smoke. So you can see some uh, classic kind of image tearing problems going on in that region. 
Um, but the rest of it holds up fairly well. So this is a, our example of a really, really quite a tricky shot. Um, and for people who want to do this um, modification of camera interaxial separation in post, um, your, your mileage will vary from the idea of a, a plain uh, square room with nothing in it. We can achieve really nice virtual results for intermediate camera placement. And uh, a dense forest where every tree in the left eye isn't visible in the right eye and vice versa will be the ultimate nightmare for this kind of, this kind of um, uh, modification of the interaxial. Um, so uh, to round up, there's a huge number of other things in that you can then do when you have this kind of stuff in the stream. So on this setup now, I have a very, I have one EXR stream coming in. That stream contains the left eye view, it contains the right eye view, and it also contains a pre-computed disparity map. So our idea behind this is that the disparity map is computed offline overnight in an automated fashion. So when we start work, we just load up this one core thing which gets passed through the tree, and we can then do stuff with it. Um, is so, that, is that generation automatic? There's no adjustments per there se? Are, there are some adjustments which can be made. Um, uh, it tends to be one of those things where I go around the houses a few times making some adjustments to try and get a shot to look good, and I almost always come back to where I started. So I think you can get a lot of mileage out of just having this stuff done as an offline process. And then if there's some that really need tuning, you've actually, then you've only got to tune those and not all of them, because it's a very compute intensive kind of process. Um, so what we've done here is introduce a paint node into the stream. And on the left-hand view, then I paint IBC in my best I can paint uh, style. And because we have the disparity map, we can then use that mapping to do the mapping onto the right image. So we've done the mapping of the paint strokes, vector paint strokes, onto the right image so that they actually position correctly in space for the whole sequence. Um, and so in the anaglyph view, then you can see that we've got the left and the right view of the IBC uh, text in there. And there's a whole range of stuff which is like this. So um, any control which has an XY position somewhere in Nuke, as long as you have this disparity information in the tree, you can then use it to offset any of these XY locations. So you can apply it to paint, you can apply it to rotos, uh, you can apply it to basically anything you want. You can just ask it what the offset is and get the offset applied for you, which is a neat trick.